Hello there and welcome to this quick start video on how to record MIDI into Cubase Elements, Cubase AI or Cubase LE. Actually, it'll work for any version of Cubase, so we welcome all Cubase users to this video. Previously, we looked at how to set up a complete system configuration for a door or digital audio workstation, and we discussed the need to make sure you've installed the manufacturer's software for an external MIDI hardware device. Once you've done that, it will show up in the device setup menu under MIDI port setup inside of Cubase. If you need to, go and watch that video and do a quick recap. In the meantime, I've gone to the project assistant in the Steinberg Hub and I'm finding a template that works for what I want to record. Hip hop, for instance. Once I set my project folder location, which is where I want my files to be stored, a new project has come up with a combination of instruments, audio track, and effects. And these are all routed directly to my hardware device. In this folder track down the bottom, you can see that there's two different effects channels with inserts already connected. It's a really easy way of recording inside a Cubase to start with, but we're not doing things the easy way. Let's go back to the hub, select more, empty, and create. Set the project folder location, select open, and now we have a new empty Cubase project in the project window. Let's click on the add track icon, and you'll see add instrument track, MIDI track, and sampler track. All three of these track types are controlled using MIDI. So let's start by adding a MIDI track. I'm naming it and hit add track and it will appear there. Now that we've got a MIDI track, we could use an old school manner for drawing in MIDI data. Grab your pen, draw an event, and the event houses MIDI data. So we can double click on that event to open the editor in the lower zone, get our pen again, and draw in some MIDI notes. You'll notice a piano roll on the left hand side. We can grab our eraser and we can delete these MIDI notes. We can also delete the event that we created up the top by clicking on it and hitting delete on the computer keyboard. Most people are going to want to record MIDI data using an external MIDI keyboard or pad controller. So I'm turning my metronome on and you can do that using C on your computer keyboard and hitting record. And I'm playing in some information by pressing notes on my MIDI keyboard. Some of you may be sitting there scratching your head and thinking, I didn't hear any sound. Well, that's because no sound is actually communicated between MIDI devices, only information. When I press record and start playing, my MIDI keyboard sends a series of messages to the computer. For instance, it'll say, at this point in time, this guy hit this note and he hit it at this velocity. So the computer knows how hard I played a single individual note. It will then say, at this point in time, he's released a note and he started playing another series of notes at this particular volume. It also records a whole lot of other event information, things like modulation or pitch bend. It will even record information on things like a sustain pedal that you might have plugged into your MIDI controller. And the beauty about MIDI is we're only recording events. So we can draw in additional MIDI information or edit MIDI information that we've recorded down in the editor in the lower zone. One of the beautiful things about Cubase is the way that everything works together. Up the top in the project window, we've got the MIDI event which houses all of the MIDI data. And we can change the start and the end points by picking up on the bottom left and right corner tabs. You can copy and paste the event by picking up on the tab in the middle of the right hand side and dragging to the right. If you want to cut the event, get the scissor tool and make the cuts by pressing down on the mouse at the place where you want to cut the event. Sometimes you might find it's hard to actually make the edit on the exact point where you want it. And that is probably because the snap function is on. As soon as the snap function is on, our edits will snap only into the specification that we have set on the right hand side. So for instance, I need to change it from bar to beat and now I can make an incision on the actual beat. If I want to get even more precise, I should change it from beat to use quantize. And now I could go with a higher quantize setting. I've selected one over 32 and immediately I've got a grid behind that's got 32 subdivisions in each bar. And now I can make a cut precisely on any one of these subdivisions. It's an important concept because we can edit in exactly the same way with MIDI and audio down in the lower zone. Every tool inside of Cubase is important and we will cover them all as we go through this video series. You can use your arrow to draw a box around a series of events to delete all of them or affect all of them. You can also remove a track by right mouse clicking on it and selecting remove selected tracks.
It's time to record something with some sound. So I've deleted the MIDI track and I'm adding an instrument track. You can also do it by clicking on this button here. We can add an individual instrument using this drop down menu here, but maybe you're just starting out with Cubase and you don't know where to go to find a particular type of sound. I'm clicking on the browse button to open up the media bay, which is a massive library of everything Steinberg related. In the left column, I can see all of the content sets that have come with Cubase or that I've purchased separately through a shop or through the Steinberg online shop. As I move to the right, I can select a type of category, like a piano sound, and then I can see all of the individual piano sounds in the right-hand column. I can even change the way I filter or view different types of sounds or attributes of the sound in my library. I can select an instrument, like for instance, Hallian Sonic SE, and then I select the preset that I want. And now the instrument is opened in my track list and I can open the instrument using this button here. Hallian Sonic SC has loaded up. And this is an incredible VST instrument made by Steinberg. But now we don't have time to go into it in this quick start video. So let's make sure you've got your MIDI keyboard working and you've got sound. Let's close the window, go to the MIDI inputs on the left hand side, make sure you've got your MIDI controller selected. If you can't hear anything, Go down to the bottom right hand corner of the project window to the MIDI activity monitor and just have a look to see if there's any activity there. If there's nothing there, then there's every chance you've been quite naughty and you haven't watched the video on how to set up your system. So please go back and watch that and make sure you've got all of the necessary drivers installed. If you want to work to a click track, then make sure you've got your tempo right down in the transport bar and also make sure that you've got your metronome turned on. Now, I would advise working to a click track if you're going to collaborate with other people because it makes it that much easier. If you're proper old school, you can right mouse click on the timeline and change it back to seconds. Now you're pretty much ready to go. Hit record and play something. The awesome thing about recording with MIDI is it doesn't need to be perfect because we can go and edit afterwards. For instance, if I want to change the start length of this event, you'll notice it's chopping a MIDI note off. And that's because I've been naughty and I've played it before the beat. I can edit that note really quickly in the lower zone or to get an even bigger picture of what I played, I can open it up by clicking on this arrow and now I can see almost everything in a larger window. Now. Each note is color coded and that is because I've played each note at a different velocity. I'd love to say that that first one there's orange but I'm colorblind so it's orange or red. Regardless of the color I can turn my snap on up the top and now I can start editing the start of that event and it will snap to my grid. I can also edit the end of the event. Now if I want to trim the event I just grab my trim tool and I just make a slice and all of a sudden the end of those events are gone. I can go up and undo anything using the Edit Undo or Control or Command Z. Next up, I've got my pen tool. So I can add extra information in there to make me look like an even better piano player. Or I can grab my Erase tool and I can remove the notes that I really didn't want. I would also advise sometimes using the Mute tool because maybe it's a note that we might want to add again afterwards and remember what we played there. So we can mute it by clicking on it and unmute it by clicking on it again. Now, it would be tedious to go and edit all of these events and get them all in time. So what I'm going to do is go to Edit, Select All, and that's selected all of my notes. Now I can edit all of them in one go. For instance, I can pick up on the tab in the middle of the controller lane and move all of the velocity up and down. I can draw a crescendo in by picking up on the tab on the left-hand side, and I can have a decrescendo by doing exactly the same thing on the right-hand side. But if timing's what you really want to tidy up, then we can start to use the quantize function to make sure every note is perfectly in time. It can take a while to just master the quantize settings, so it's important to have a bit of a play around. As a general rule, I would say go for the most subdivisions as possible. So one eighth, if you're playing reasonably slowly, if you're playing faster notes than one sixteenth or one thirty two. This is what happens when you get it wrong. I'm selecting quarter notes or one quarter. And now we've got this. Everything's been moved to the closest subdivision of the bar, which is quarter notes. Let's go to 1 16th and hit quantize again. And that's perfectly in time. 
So it's a matter of just having a bit of a play around with the quantized settings. If you get it wrong, don't worry, you can always undo what you've just done or even just move it to another quantized setting. Now that the MIDI data is tidy, I can crop the start and the end and have a really neat event out in the project window. I can drag and drop that event wherever I want. I can even move it down and drop it onto a new track and a new instance of Hellion Sonic SE2 will open with that piano sound. This video has been more for people that want to actually record MIDI data, but let's say you don't play an instrument, or let's say you're a composer and you're struggling for an idea. In the next video, we're going to look at using Chord Track to compose and create MIDI data using VST instruments. Thanks for stopping by. Have a look around the YouTube channel. Please subscribe and please like us on Facebook, Twitter and social media so we can stay connected. I'll catch you in the next video.